so what we're going to talk about today is uh, CWD. Um, we've got Matt Boyer here with the Missouri Department of Conservation um, and we're just going to kind of go over CWD and what it is. Um, we know a lot of people have a lot of questions about CWD and so we're going to try to address some of those questions and get some information out there because I think information once people understand a little bit more about what CWD is, I think they'll be a little more inclined to want to help out and definitely want to get their deers tested as they shoot them, whether they are in um, a mandatory uh, zone or not in Missouri. But it's a pretty serious disease. Um, so Matt, let's get into it. So uh, what exactly is CWD? So it's a neurological disease uh, that's found in the uh, servant family or the deer family. Uh, so it's chronic wasting disease. And basically it's, a, it's, it's not a typical disease in the fact that it's, a, it's, not, a, it's not a virus, it's not a bacteria, not a fung, fung, fungi or anything like that. It, it is actually a protein and it's a misfolded protein. Uh, that forms in the, on the brain, on the surface of the brain in deer, uh, can cause, uh, basically it's 100% fatal once a deer contracts the disease, um, and it can take quite some time before, between the time the deer picks up the disease until it starts to show clinical signs of the disease. Clinical signs being basically wasting away of the deer, so it's, you know, they, they get very uh, skinny, uh, Basically, they start foaming at the mouth, or you know, salivating from the mouth. A lot of kind of basic things that you look at a deer and say, "Wow, that deer looks really sick." Right. Um, you know, they they show that, but once they get to that point, they die pretty quickly. So you don't see a lot of deer uh, that have the disease. You don't see a lot of sick deer until it becomes very prevalent right. uh, in the environment. So, gotcha. And does it how how exactly does the disease spread? So it spreads from deer to deer primarily. Uh, a, a deer that's infected doesn't take very long between the time they pick up the disease to where they become contagious. Uh, even though they don't show any signs of the disease, they are contagious. Uh, and they, as they come in contact with other deer, whether it's nose to nose, or if they lick, uh, you know, they lick a mineral block, another deer comes in and licks that mineral block right after them. They exchange saliva, basically. Uh, you know, that disease can be transferred that way. Can you spread through water too? Uh, water. not necessarily through water. I don't think as much as it can be. It is found in the soil, so uh, they do know that it, a deer that dies from the disease can lay there. It can it can get into the soil. Plants can actually take up the disease. Uh, so there is some indication that that a, a deer could pick the disease up by eating the, the that plant that has then picked up the disease. So there's there's several ways a deer can come on come across a dead deer. Uh, you know, especially the nervous system, any, any part of the central nervous system, if a deer comes in contact that with a deer that has died, uh, then the, it could spread that way as well. So, but primarily we believe the spread of the disease is, is through deer-to-deer -deer contact from two, or from an infected deer to non infected deer. Gotcha. So the soil, when it hits the soil, I think they say that it can be, once that pro, uh, prion protein bonds with that soil particle, it can be up to like 700 times more infectious once it bonds with soil particles. Um, so when that gets down into the soil, like, so if you use, um, let's say if you use a urine spray, like uh, a tractant from a deer farm and their deer farm happens to have CWD and people are using that, if the deer would, if you spray that straight into a deer's mouth, I think they say that that's not necessarily gonna spread, the, that it's not infectious enough for that deer to get CWD. But if you were to make a mock scrape on the ground and spray that all over that, once it bonds with those soil particles and the deer come along, which that's a communal spot for lots of different mm -hmm. deer, um, those deer start licking that dirt or ingesting that dirt, then that is a spot where they can yeah. definitely uh, ingest that enough infectious protein to uh, can attract the disease itself. Yeah, you know, and, and honestly, I don't know a lot about uh, you know what happens when it gets in the soil, um, but but I do know there's there's a lot of research being done on this disease. There's a lot of unknowns about the disease. Yeah. Uh, a lot a lot of stuff that we we're not sure about. You know we're not we're not sure how how contagious it is through deer urine or how you know yeah. how long it persists and stuff. So there, yeah, you're right. I mean there's all kinds of, of research being done out there. Uh, 
and it's a try it's, to learn more about it's this extremely um, resistive so it's uh, yeah, it's a very can't. strong you can't temp yeah, you don't you, can't you don't it you out. don't kill this you don't uh, you don't take a deer and yeah, you know, if you got your fingers, you, you don't just wash it off. You don't wipe it off with the alcohol. Uh, you can't burn it. Uh, it takes incredibly high temperatures to like even destroy it. 600 degrees burn. centigrade. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's higher than even, I mean, it would take like commercial grade incinerators to get yeah. rid of this. So it's Yeah, you ain't going to cook it off with your uh, charcoal grill. Yeah, that's the scary thing about it. And again, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, for lack of better terms, it would be like you and I have the flu. Just because you have the flu and you came up to me and coughed yeah. would mean I get the flu. That, we find the CWD similar to that. You know, obviously it's not a virus, but it's similar that we're not, we don't think that every deer that comes in contact with the deer with CWD gets it, but we do know that eventually it does spread throughout a population. It takes quite some time, but once it does spread, it's 100% fatal. Uh, once it does start to spread through that, we, they do know that out west they're seeing populations of deer decline uh, that are infected with, with CWD and, and the prevalence rate picks up, population starts to decline. So, so the white tail and mule deer? Yeah, all, all the members of the cerf family, so white-tailed meal deer, meal, deer um, elk. moose, and elk. Yeah. Yeah. I think you'd say in moose, it's, they're less as work, I don't know how to put that, but they're, they're more of a, a nomadic yeah. cervid, so they're, they're, they're not in contact with each other quite as much. Um, the, more social, less, the more social yeah, the, the, the more animal social is, the more likely it's going right, yeah, to it's, it's spread pretty quickly. So. But that's kind of something that makes CWD more dangerous as a as the type of disease it is, the TSE, because it is spread outside of consumption. Uh, most other TSEs are consumption based, like mad cow disease and um, uh, Creutzfeldt Jacobs disease. Yeah. Those are mostly well, and they don't even know on that one whether it's yeah. through consumption or not. But um, with they, mad cow disease, it's mostly a consumption thing, you yeah. know, almost uh, cannibalistic. Yeah, and again, you know, it's not been proven to be something that spreads from a deer. If a human eats a deer that's infected, right. it's not been proven, but there are studies out there that are showing that there, there may be something to that. Right. Uh, and right. very preliminary studies. So it's, it's way too early to make any kind of, you know, right. firm stance on that. But it's enough that I think folks are saying, oh, well, we... We need to uh, We're safe be careful about this, and, and we right. need to research it more. So they're, they're doing a lot of research now. Not really something you're going to go feed your kids, huh? Yeah. Um, no, we live in southeast Missouri, so there was one taken, in, or one tested positive in St. Jim County? Yeah, so there's been two deer tested positive in St. Jim County in the last, uh, through the last deer season. Uh, those two samples were collected during the mandatory sampling period, which is the first two days of the, of the firearms deer season. Uh, and they were uh, about three miles apart, give or take, between the two positives. So, um, you know, we as an agency have kind of got on to that. Uh, we have a standard protocol that we follow, that we follow to try to manage the disease as best we can when we when we get that. But those are the those are the two new ones in St. Genevieve County, neighboring Jefferson County to the north. Uh, there's there's two positives there as well that are about five miles apart from each other. So. Gotcha. So when you do find a deer that tests positive, how do you how do you test them? Like the whole process there. How do we do? Say that again. Like testing. How do you test them? Do you just okay, so the testing is pretty simple. There's no live test for CWD, so you can't test a deer that's alive. Uh, it has to, you know, basically you bring in a deer that's been shot, you slit it across the neck, and you you go up to its lymph nodes that are around its voice box, and you and you pull those lymph nodes out. So the the disease presents itself in those lymph nodes before it really starts to present itself anywhere at all. So it's a good early indicator that the, right. that is, the deer is, uh, has, has a disease. So, so the, and the disease will, once a deer contracts CWD from a, another infectious deer that has spread some of those prions out, um, so the first couple months it's not really infectious, but then for the next uh, like 18 to 20 months, it's dormant and it doesn't show any signs, right? Yeah, and I'm not even sure about that. I'm not sure there's a real good indication out there as far as when that when that it becomes starts. infectious. What they do know yeah. is that it takes it takes a, up to about 18 months, give or take, uh, for the disease to really present itself, uh, you know, clinically. Yeah. So it, you so the notice. where that starts, I'm not sure, but I do know that it, you know that's the scary thing is I I've seen deer. Uh, I, actually, I remember the first year that tested positive in Jefferson County, 
uh, I was at the mandatory sta station that it, that it came through. Uh, and, and for other reasons, the guy that was there uh, that had the deer, I remember him and remember he had three deer on a trailer. And when we processed those deer for you know testing for CWD, you couldn't have told the difference between those three deer, but right. one of those disease, one of those had CWD and the other two didn't. Yeah, right. that's there's, probably one of the worst parts about it is that yeah. you can't, there's no way to tell looking at a deer whether it's yeah. got it or not for the majority of that time period. And then once it does come into effect, I think it's like around six weeks or so that it'll completely have the deer wasted away. Yeah, it doesn't take long once they once they start to, the disease starts to really manifest itself in there. From what I've seen, I think it, so the disease, um, talking more on the disease and how it affects the deer, it um, destroys neurons in the brain. That's why, uh, yeah, it's uh, they like a spongy brain, as they call it, a TSE. Yeah. And under a microscope, it looks spongy because it's literally destroying. Yeah. Um, and, then and like you said, there's not, they're still doing a lot of uh, tests and stuff like that. They don't even know how it destroys them, which you think, you know, which kind of to me says a lot to how much, uh, how kind of in depth the disease is as a whole, because you think knowing how it affects or how it destroys or whether it consumes them or yeah. uh, the neurons would be something you would know, but um, they don't know that yet. Yeah, so the, the family of diseases, you know, the, the scraping sheep and, you know, the Crutchfield Jacob or however you say that disease in humans, you know, they're, they're horrible diseases and they. They all kind of have the same end is yeah. you die. There's, yeah. there's no cure for them. It's so it's, it's one of those things that the, it's, it's not a good disease to contract, regardless of what right. species you are. Yeah. So, yeah. So you said you did a, when you found the one in Jefferson County, mm -hmm. you said you found one. What made you guys go to that county to check? Was there suspicion? It, it? No, was it, was, uh, it was part of a mandatory sampling uh, county. So when we find a positive in a given area, uh, they draw a 25 mile radius circle around that known positive. And then counties that are kind of hit by that 25 mile radius circle, we typically throw into what we call chronic waste and disease management zone. And so once you're put into that management zone, then the next deer season around, you'll be part of mandatory sampling or most likely be part of mandatory sampling. And so we found it, uh, they had it in Franklin County and then the 25 mile radius circle hit Jefferson County, so they got thrown in, so it was mandatory sampling. Yeah. Uh, and so we're, we're lucky in, in, in Missouri, very lucky in that we take, are able to take a lot of samples. You know, this past deer season, we took 20,000 samples, uh, which is an incredible number of samples um, compared to other states. We're, we're fortunate for that. And because we take so many samples and because we do intense sampling, especially in these management zones, we feel pretty comfortable that when we find the disease, we found it in an area that probably has fairly low prevalency rate uh, from what we found and, and the other sites that we found we don't so far we've not found it and then all of a sudden been like holy cow there's 20 yeah, more positives right. here you know it's one of those things where you find one like you might you take that. three four hundred samples you might get another one or two but it's not one of those things that we're just finding like oh man it's been here for a long time we, we're pretty confident that we're finding it quickly after it's moved to a new area uh, because of that intense sampling that we've done. So that, that's that's important for us as far as monitoring the disease. So you said you're under, you're over the, what, 16 counties? Yeah, so I'm the wildlife regional supervisor over the southeast region, which is, I believe, 16 counties. So how many of those counties are, have you, are in those 25 mile radius? Fortunately for us, we're kind of in the corner. Uh, and so only St. Genevieve uh, and St. Francis counties are the only two in our region. Uh, Jefferson County is actually St. Louis region, but because they've got quite a bit going on Franklin County, we actually help to cover yeah, Jefferson yeah. County. Gotcha. Right about this time in the video, I'll, we'll be cutting to, you'll see it right now. You're going to see a map of Missouri with all the red dots okay, on it. Cool. We're going to read those pamphlets too. So do they know exactly where CWD came from? Like where we're at in the United States? You know, it origin in, uh, originated in Colorado, um, but they are not sure how it started there. Um, they do know, uh, or th there's there's theories out there that it originated from a, from scraping and sheep that it could have been transferred in there, but honestly, they're not sure how it started out there, or nothing definite. Right. Right. And we talked about the other day when we had our original meeting. You said talk about the, the pulling out. 
How exactly does that work? How do you guys go about doing that process? The culling? Yeah. Yeah, so, so what we do is when we find one positive deer uh, in a new area, um, typically we come in and we call that targeted surveillance. Uh, so we, we draw a five mile radius circle around that, that positive. Um, and then we collect additional samples around that lone positive. And, and we do that you know, post season, post our, our normal deer season. Uh, we, we try to get as many of those samples during mandatory sampling. Mm -hmm. uh, we also try to get samples through voluntary sampling in that zone. So we're, we're trying to get as many of those samples during the hunting season. That, or, you know, ideally we'd get all of those samples during the hunting season. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a huge effort on our staff just to get mandatory sampling done for two days so that, you know, to, to carry mandatory sampling through an entire deer season is, is a lot of work uh, and, and would, would really affect everything else that we do as an agency. So. So we find that getting as many deer during mandatory sampling, then adding a few deer for voluntary sampling. And then at the end, you know, within that five mile radius circle, we typically have a goal of so many deer that we want to try to sample to give us a good estimate of what's going on in that circle. Okay. So if we find an additional positive in there, then we tighten the circle up around those two positives. Uh, so for example, Jefferson County last, you know, last year, we had a five mile radius circle. We find a positive. Uh, that five mile radius circle, if you calculate that all out, comes out to about hundred square miles. When we found the additional positive in that circle, we tighten it up. Uh, we draw basically the, the uh, section that the, the positive is found in, then a two section buffer on each side. And then we connect the two samples together. So we've got kind of a continuous mm -hmm. area there. And when you get all done with all that, it comes down about 56 square miles. So we tighten up the circle around those two positives. We intensify the sampling within that section uh, where the positives are found to try to really uh, harvest as many deer as we can in, in that small area to try to make sure that any other positives that are there are, are killed. Uh, f effectively, you're trying to drive, trying to shoot the, uh, the family group that that deer is a part of. Right. Uh, and try, try to drive out any positives there. Outside of that section, you know, the other two square miles on each side, then you, we, we really are trying to get more samples and, and intensify sampling outside of that so we get a good idea of them. If the disease has kind of moved out of that that square mile, then we can we can find additional positives. So yeah. I think that's important for people to know, because when they hear calling or you know anything like that, or they they hear of a buddy that's got a farm where there's calling being done, yeah. they they think oh they're just out there shooting all the deer and they're you know getting rid of all the deer, but I think it's important to know that you guys are focusing on the hot spots. You know it's it's all um, a program that you have put in place and it, and it seems to be successful. Have. Uh, yeah. I mean, as successful can be with this disease. Yeah. I mean, there's really no stopping the spread. But if you can, if you can get out, get around the outside as quick as you, you know, you get your samples yeah. and, 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 like you said, tighten it in, tighten it. And in. The most important thing to remember is that we work only with willing landowners. So even if somebody, you know, that shot the deer on his own property that came up positive, and he's got a positive on 50 acres, and he says, "I don't want to shoot another deer off that property," then we're we're not gonna. Right. Force his hand, you know. We, we, honestly, we can't. Right. So we're we're not we're we're going to work around him. We're going to work with other landowners that are willing to work with us. Uh, but in most cases, or well, in all cases, we we only work with willing landowners. Right. Um, and you know, we give landowners even the option to shoot deer off their own property. Uh, you know, most important thing to us is getting those samples. So if the landowner wants to shoot on his own property, doesn't want NBC coming on there, that's perfectly fine. They can shoot deer off their property. If landowner doesn't want to deal with it, and wants us to come on, then we come on and shoot. And then the meat's all taken care of too. You know, we, we either uh, process the meat, and the landowner can process it and keep it for himself, uh, or we can process the meat and donate to you know needy needy folks through the share of the harvest program. Uh, once you know, once we get you know all tests back, positive everything's negative. Right, you know, right. Obviously, any positive tests then are are uh, you know the meat is is uh, disposed of properly, and yeah, uh, we don't no one's going to consume that. But um, and unfortunately, there's no other way to do it. Uh, that, that we know of right now because yeah. there's like you said there's the only way to test them is on, yeah this disease is you know this is not a disease that Missouri only is dealing with this is a throughout the white-tailed deer range throughout uh, really all the deer range in, in North America uh, this disease either either you know it has a agency is worried about how they're going to handle it uh, since they've got it or they're worried about what they're going to do when and if it gets to them so so this is a huge concern across the country and what we've seen is uh, the method that we're using is a similar method to how Illinois is dealing with it and several other states um, where we're kind of going in and trying to cull out some deer in a very small area 
to prevent the spread of the disease any further. So we, we know that from other states out there that have done nothing or just uh, kind of done surveillance and not done additional harvest or, or culling efforts, uh, we know that the disease tends to tends to really pick up in prevalency and become established in those areas. Well, and it's, it's tough too because I know, I think it was in, in Wisconsin maybe, uh, somewhere up north they were doing a lot of culling and there was a big outcry, public yeah. outcry for it and they, and they kind of had to shut it down. Yeah. And in turn, now that's one of the worst areas for CWD in the nation. Yeah, Wisconsin was doing uh, some, some similar methods, like I said, some culling and stuff like that for the first couple of years that they had it. And I don't know the time frame exactly, but they had done it. They got some political pressure to stop. Uh, meanwhile, Illinois, right across the, the border from them, was has continually done the culling and continued to done similar uh, management as, as that we are. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, you know, right across the border from each other, Wisconsin's prevalency rates have continued to climb, and Illinois has been able to hold theirs at a very low prevalency rate yeah. uh, just because they're, they're, they're doing that management. So it's... It, it's one of those things you see stuff like that. You're like, okay, that you know, this is the best it case um, yeah. management that we know, the best right. science that, that's out there right now. That's what we know yeah. to do. There's no uh, special camera that you can point at deer and see that they. Yeah, there, right there's out. no way to tell. And uh, for right now, that's what we do. Now, granted, there's research ongoing. They're trying to figure out other ways to manage this. You know, there's talks of trying to put together vaccines, and they're testing vaccines. Nothing's really worked at this point, uh, but there, there's. There's definitely lots of research going on to figure out what's right. Like. Obviously, white-tailed deer, uh, all deer are huge, huge part of our hunter heritage across the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, everyone wants to figure out a way to. Yeah, to I think prevent we're, this we all need to make sure we're in the same boat. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's a huge industry out there involved yeah. with it that I think uh, getting them on the same page too. You know, there's yeah. there's a lot of funds out there that I think could be put put to good use. Yeah. You know, with that, with the yeah. studies and things that you know, they could do more and more and more. Yeah. So, so it's almost like what it says here in '67 they found it in Colorado. Yeah. So it's been what 50 years. So it's basically not if you're going to get it's almost a win. Like which state? Huh? Yeah, I mean there there's. So you can't reduce all of them or keep them all trapped in there. Yeah. So eventually. Yeah, there's potential. Eventually, it could it could be despite all that. Uh, how there, but despite all those efforts, and really our. Our methodology is, is there to prevent the spread of it, to try to keep right. it off the landscape. You know, we don't, we don't really want it out there in the environment as little as possible. You know, removing these deer, you know, if you get a bunch of infected deer scattered across the environment, that, that has as much of impact as just the actual deer-to-deer -deer contact. Right. You have, so. And you can't, you can't necessarily, let's say if Florida has, doesn't have it yet, and the two, three states above it um, had really, really good... Um, ways of managing it and kept it out of their states. It doesn't necessarily mean Florida's not going to get it because there's other ways it can get there by people bringing, uh, let's say you, you go out west and you shoot a big elk and you drag the whole carcass back with you and you throw it out in your back 40 acres, you know, in a ditch and a deer comes up on that, you know, there's very well that he could get or that that deer could contract it from that yeah. uh, or you know, moving herds. There's a lot of elk reintroduction going on right now mm -hmm. in the east. Um, CWD can be an elk on elk farms, or, or you know, that can be present when they move those elk. So there's a lot. Well, there's, of, I think, laws going into place right now on yeah. trying to stop the. There's a lot movement. of communication between states and among states and in states that are all trying to figure out oh, what what can we do to prevent the movement of this disease. So. You know, historically, like you said, there was a lot of movement in carcass. No one ever thought about, yeah. you know, shooting a big deer and, you know, driving it to the next state over. And, and at that point, you know, who knows, uh, especially some of these western states where it's been out there for quite some time. Uh, yeah, there, at one point in time, there's a lot of that. I, I think I think you're seeing a lot less of that now, yeah. as, as, I think the especially where, where it's known. Yeah, where CWD is known, there's a lot more laws out there to prevent the movement of those carcasses. So when you uh, do, but there is, like I said, there, there's really no stopping it. There's, yeah. there's a lot of different streams that it can come through. Right. What's the best way to handle the carcass if you do have a carcass and you're, you're worried that, you know, it, it, even yeah. if you if you get your CWD test. Yeah, I mean, so you know when you shoot a deer, um, do as much on the land where you shot the deer. Uh, you know, best case scenario, you can basically break that old deer down and debone the meat and just pull the meat out that's the best way um if if not you know getting rid of that nerve the central nervous system as much as you can the, the spine and the brain and everything and getting the meat 
away from it and, and leaving it where he found it. I mean, ultimately, no matter what, you know, even if you even if you just uh, field dress a deer and you take the deer back home with you, uh, you know, hopefully you can take that deer. When you get done processing right. that deer, you can take the parts of that deer back that you're not using and deposit it back on the, the place that you found it. That's a good you idea. Know, it, if you can't do that, you know, if, if that's not the, if you're not able to do that, uh, you know, and this is all assuming you don't have any tests, you don't right, know any, right. anything about the deer, uh, the, the next best scenario would be to deposit it in a uh, registered landfill. Yeah. So take that deer, put it in a dumpster that you know is going to register landfill and, and and get rid of it that way. So do you know if there's any landfills around here registered? Or yeah, most registered? of the, most of the major landfills here are, so are, are you, registered. So yeah. you can just put it in a dumpster, yeah, dumpster uh, that you know is going to go to a landfill. Um, I'm pretty sure most of them are, are registered here. If nothing else, that gets it out. I know. think that the, the science behind the landfill, from what I understood, was um, like a clay liner. Yeah. Uh, so that if those prions would wash down or get down, they they'll bond, like we said earlier, they'll bond yeah. to those soil particles or those clay particles, yeah. and they won't actually push through. It's just the water. As best you can keep it out of any new environment. Right. So you know, like I said, if you can leave it where you where you got it, then that's the best case. Just uh, you know. Yeah, if, it, if at least if you're not going to get it yeah. tested or anything yeah. like that, yeah. So this might be silly, but I always see a bunch of like Western hunters and they got to hike a lot further to hunt. Mm -hmm. Like on the mountains, they take care of the deer out there and pack it down in packs. Can you use that legal to do in Missouri too? Like on a conservation land, if you do. Like if you're hunting in Apple Creek. Uh, yeah, yeah I hunt in Apple Creek, you shoot a bug. I can I yeah, I think quarter it, it out and be bone out there and pack it out. Sure on that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you can quarter it out and bring it out. Um, I just didn't know if you could just leave as long a carcass laying there. Yeah, as long as you got it tagged and the you know the remains of it tagged. And right, and you're man enough to, to hike it out. Yeah, <laughs> and you got time to process it out there. But yeah. And another thing too, we can edit this out if you need to. But let's say a farmer or a hunter shoots a deer and tests positive for CWD. I imagine you guys confiscate that deer. Do the farmers or the hunters get another tag? Can they purchase another tag, or is it just one and done? Yeah, and you know we. Have, we, they don't. So, you know, we, we went and the, the folks that harvest the deer in St. Genevieve County, um, you know, they harvest the deer, harvest the deer. well, the, the tests don't come back because we're doing 15,000 tests at once yeah. during mandatory right. cycling. So, we'll be so the tests don't come back for six, you know, sometimes four to six weeks. Um, so it's hard to come back and say, hey, here's another right. firearms deer tag yeah. that you can't use. Um, and, and, the, and the occurrence, you know, we did 20,000 tests, 15 were positive. So the, the, the odds are are strongly right. against you shooting one. So at this point, no, we, we don't offer you back a CWD permit uh, or CWD, a, like a, a deer permit or, or a bonus tag or anything like gotcha. that. Uh, we do, you know, we, we do talk to those people about eating that meat. Uh, unfortunately, probably the, the biggest concern is that folks are taking their meat, uh, even these guys are, you know, processing their own meat and they've got that deer mixed with the other three deer that they yeah. shot. So they've got a lot of meat there that they're not sure what's what, which deer is which. And so a lot of times they end up getting rid of all the meat that, that's there. So it's, it's one of those things, I mean, I think definitely people need to start thinking about is processing stuff separately, uh, deboning meat and, and keeping it until you test back. And, and then once you get all, they're all negative, then if you want to combine it for sausage or whatever right. you're doing, then that's fine. But keeping that meat separate and uh, identifiable, you know, you want to make sure you know which deer was which. Right. If you're shooting multiple deer and getting the multiple deer tested, then make sure that you're, you're identifying those, right. those deer. I'm not dogging. Process of plants either, but if you could do it yourself at your house or your own, it might be better too, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, so I mean, processors, and farm. we've talked to processors, and we ongoing conversation with processors about. Do, I mean, they're they're as concerned about this as the next person, right? Um, probably more so because it does it, it is their livelihood in right. a lot of cases, um, and and the you know the the idea that a processor is going to process one deer, clean all the stuff, process the next deer, and do that you know four hundred five hundred times. Right. It's so just, it's, yeah, or more, yeah, it's just not, uh, it's really just not feasible. So it, it is a scenario that if, if you were really concerned about it, uh, yeah, it as right. with anything, I mean, a lot, a lot of people don't have their deer managed by a processor at this point just because they don't, they don't want to worry about that. They want to get their own deer back. Right. And so that's, that's fine, so. And that's, that's another industry that's yeah. got a dog right. in this fight. And know? most processors, I mean, they, they do their best to make sure that you get your deer back as yeah. much as anyone right. wants to say. I mean, I've talked to several. They, they yeah. do their best to make sure that this, you know, but you get the tail end of one deer the next year, you know, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. And, and not really my, I don't really 
can't really speak to that more than that and know right. that, that they do really try. So, but, but for I this think case, you said earlier too, though, if a guy would, worst case scenario, you do have CWD on your land, uh, or you do harvest deer with CWD. Um, when you guys do go into your uh, calling out, you do offer um, the the landowner could recoup their meat loss if if that deer if they them losing that one deer is is you know a massive amount a massive deal to them. Um, you know, like me, a lot of a lot of my family we eat deer meat and that's a big part of our um meat intake throughout the year is is, yeah. is venison so yeah i mean right now we you know we allow that that landowner and the landowners within that zone to harvest the additional deer uh, outside the normal season uh you know we even offer that if you shoot a deer we'll come get it we, we will process a deer for you so we, we grind it up in a burger right um, now that's a benefit but i mean no but it is a way to get that, that, that yep. if he if he yep. is you know because sometimes you only get a chance that yeah. at that one deer, and, yeah. you know. So. Yeah, and so that's you know that has helped the, the the landowners that we had to take deer from. They're like, well, I'd like to shoot one more, and one yeah, certainly, you know, that's no doubt. Yeah. Because uh, because it, it is. I mean, that's a that's a, a neat thing about this part of the country. Uh, you know, a lot of people depend on deer as yeah as their it's staple. A resource. You know, they're staple for uh, much of the much of the year. So. You know. So as hunters and. Just outdoorsmen in general, what can we do to help you guys or help the effort? Yeah, I mean, most, mostly at this point is continue to, to seek out ways to educate yourself, uh, understand, uh, you know, the, the disease that we're dealing with. Uh, you know, we as an agency are trying to do more um, to get the word out to, to the general public. Uh, we work hard with these landowners, uh, you know, in these, in these core areas and surveillance zones. We, we work very hard with them, and we work, you know, get a lot of information to them, um, and and we are working, trying to work hard with the folks that are outside that area to really educate them and let them know, uh, you know, what is CWD. There's a lot of a lot of really interesting research, you know, right now coming out that, that talks about long term effects of CWD on, on deer populations. Obviously, there's concerns about uh, consumption of deer meat contaminating with CWD, so that's still kind of ongoing and still a lot of research being done on that that uh, that we we don't know all the answers to at this point so i know that you, know. you said the other day the one big scare with consumption of deer meat that's happened um in in the scientific community was that they they it has crossed into primates yeah um they have proved that it has crossed into some primates and those primates did die from it so that yeah. you know primate genes do have a lot and similar to our Go ahead. For some reason, the thing just shut off. I heard a shutter. <laughs> Forgot to hit record, didn't you? I did. Yeah, apparently, 30 minutes is the max. That's quick 30. Yeah, it was good 30. <laughs> yeah. I do need to get going here and slow back and go pick up my daughter. We'll wrap it up. Yeah, I mean, it's, you guys are fine. You guys are fine. But. Um, but yeah, I mean, there there is a, there is preliminary studies out there that have shown um, very very preliminary studies, but there is the the connection of you know feeding uh, monkeys cooked deer meat, and then uh, I think it was like three monkeys and two of them died from CWD related uh, disease. So it, it, there there is some concern there that uh, it could cross into species barrier, but. Again, it's not been found yet for humans, but uh, it, it's enough that the Center for Disease Control uh, did kind of shift their yeah. recommendations for consuming uh, meat uh, and, and basically saying that if you live in an area where CWD has been found, that you should get your deer meat tested, prior, or you should get your deer tested prior to consumption of it. So we as an agency, you know, the Department of Conservation, you know, we're not food safety specialists, so, so we're gonna follow the experts on that uh, Center for Disease Control is obviously a, an expert on that, so so we're going to follow their recommendations and, right. and try to work with them. Um, but it is a huge concern to us, uh, you know, as far as the safety of the, of the meat to folks. So. If you're uh, if you want to get your deer tested uh, during season and you're not in a mandatory zone, mm -hmm. what's the uh, best way to go about that? Well, that's something we're working on now, um, and I'm I'm not honestly not sure how how they'll handle that. Next year, I know that we are looking into some different uh, uh, independent areas 
there's places that can can do that testing so hopefully we're gonna have some places that uh, a hunter outside of his own can be able to call and send his deer lymph nodes in or deer whatever uh, hopefully it's just lymph nodes or a deer head or something right. somehow get that and get that deer tested uh, but again that's a lot of the center for disease control the, the study with the macaque monkeys all happened here really recently yeah. so we as an agency uh, I've got to get something put together in the, in the next few months uh, to, to try to help folks figure that right. out. So. Would you, would it, let's say you're in Perry County and you, you get a deer, so St. Jen, this um, is, is currently in mandatory mm -hmm. zone, um, and would it, would it be frowned upon to take that up to the testing area that's in St. Jen to get it tested? Well, in Perry County, we hope... I would expect Perry County next year to be part of the mandatory sampling okay. zone. The, the deer that was found in K, in St. Genevieve County, the southern pause, it was just a, a mile and a half or so away from Perry County. So I would expect it to be uh, in Cape County during the first few days of deer season. If, if Cape County is not part of the mandatory sampling, you shoot a deer in Cape and you want to run up to a okay. station that's in Perry, Perry County, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we can we can test deer up there. That's that's not a problem. We're taking samples anyway. So. Hopefully we'll have some cool weather where people will yeah. do that because I think yeah, I mean, the more tests you get, the better. You know, I don't think there's we've, we've done that the last couple of years. It's been pretty successful. Uh, a lot of folks bring deer in. A lot of folks miss the old check stations anyway, so yep. they're happy to come in and bring a deer in. And, you know, the testing part of the the, uh, the process takes, you know, five minutes. You Once you pull your truck up and we pull the deer out, we take some general information about where you shot it information about you know you yourself that shot it so that if the deer comes back positive you know we're going to call you up right. and we're probably going to go out and say okay where to shoot the deer exactly get a better feel for where the location is so we can identify that but gotcha. again we're finding this a very low pregnancy rate so you know it's good now 15 20 thousand samples you know 10 15 some mass outbreak oh, yeah yeah you know and there's a lot of things out there that affect deer so you know just because you see a sick deer doesn't necessarily automatically mean it's chronic wasting disease right. yeah there's still EHD or blue tongue that's out there that is very common, uh, especially during the summer months. So, yeah, uh, and it, it has a significant impact on local deer populations from from year to year, and uh, can can be bad. But what we do know about that disease uh, is that you know deer can become immune to it. Deer can get through it. They don't always die when they get EHD. Uh, but with chronic wasting disease, it's it's different. They, there's no immunity. Uh, there's there's no living through it. They they're going to die. So. I did see some research where they um, they have found a gene in in deer that resists CWD. Um, they it's only found in like five percent of deer, and it pushes that um, like eighteen month period out to like a five year period. They still end up getting CWD and dying, and actually that can be a very big negative fact because then for instead of 18 months they're they're, they're shedding these yeah, prions right. out now they're now it's yeah. five years that are that way if so that's a, if that's a big buck then he's wandering around all over yeah, yeah yeah so it's 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 not necessarily yeah. good or bad and then i think they said from what they understand about it the, the bad part about that also is that it's if it was a positive gene for deer to have more deer more than five percent of deer would have them over time that would be a more positively selected yeah. gene to keep yeah. Um, there may be other issues with that gene. And I think the studies they did, they said the deer that they bred up out of that gene in the farms just didn't act right. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't get anything more than just didn't get act right, or get that they didn't act right <laughs> out of it. But. Um, and, and yeah, and I, I don't know enough about some of those studies like yeah. that, but uh, you know, I know they, they fill around with the vaccine and the vaccine kind of backfired on them, you know, in one case, and, and more, more deer got, got it than should have. and. So there, there's a lot of research, and, and more power to them. You know, that's the only way we're going to figure yeah, this out. Is, yeah. is they've got to do research and figure something out. Yeah, and you're going to have errors sometimes when you yeah, trial. Yeah, you know, yeah. you have a lot of yep. more trials the better. Well, I, I really thank you um, yeah. for talking good. with us today. Good. Well, yeah, appreciate, really appreciate appreciate you guys coming in. I'm glad we can help. Like I said. So if anybody has questions, like further questions, of what we cover today can they call somebody or email or we'll just give you a personal cell phone yeah, out, yeah. okay yeah. yeah i mean they they can call i mean we have a um a website that is we have like an ask mdc site that they come on we also have an ask i think we have a cwd question there there's some questions that go directly to cwd but you know you, you can you can get an email 
the folks in Jeff City, there's an Ask MDC email out there that they can email. They can call the regional office here gotcha. uh, with questions. I mean, we're more than happy to, to try to help folks out um, and, and help people become more educated. So. Sounds good. Well, thank you for your time. All right. Yeah, Very thanks, informative. Guys. Appreciate it. Hopefully, you